Why is rest critical for a healthy pastor? We're getting into that one today on the Church Revitalization Podcast. Hello, and welcome to the Church Revitalization Podcast, brought to you by the Malfers Group team, where each week we tackle important, actionable topics to help churches thrive. And now, here's your hosts, Scott Ball and A.J. Matthew. Welcome to the Church Revitalization Podcast. My name is Scott Ball. I'm joined by my friend and co-host, A.J. Matthew. Hey. A.J., I feel like... We need to confess something on the podcast. <laughs> Do we? I love when you volunteer me to confess something that, I, that I'm not aware of what it's going to be. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. I'll ju- I'll jump in with you. Yeah. Well, if people have been watching the podcast for the last few weeks, they might think, wow, those two guys only own one shirt. <laughs> if you're watching on the YouTube. Yeah. If you're watching yeah. on YouTube, you're like, these guys... <laughs> Their hair never grows, and their shirt are the same. You may have intuited that, in fact, it's because we recorded these episodes on the same day. Yeah, I feel like we should just say that's that. it. That's our that's our confession. We're sorry that we pre-recorded episodes. <laughs> yeah, we could have just dece- we could have deceived you by changing out our shirts, but we chose not to do that. That's true. Yeah. So if we sound kind of burned out, it's because we just knocked out a bunch of episodes. We're sorry. This one is not very good. <laughs> no, 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 no. In fact, I bring this up because the reason one of the reasons why <clears throat> we're recording these episodes early, there's two reasons. One, we recorded a bunch because you're going to about to be out of out of the country for a long time. Uh-huh. Um, on a trip to Asia and it's because it takes a long time to get there and a long time to get back. Um, and then not long after you get back from that, I'm gone. I'm taking a, uh, and this is why I'm bringing it up now in this episode. Uh, I'm taking a mini sabbatical of sorts. Um, taking a little bit of a break. I've been in ministry for goodness, 20 years, something like that. And, I, a couple of years ago, I took two weeks off in a row, which I had never done that. Um, and uh, this year, I'm taking like almost a whole month, um, which I've l- never done. And it feels wrong. And it feels like eat r- wrong. <laughs> I don't know what other words I could throw out here. Wrong. It feels bad. Um, and at the same time, I think it's important to take rest particularly if you're in ministry because the quality of your work depends upon the quality of the fruit that you can bear and the quality of the fruit you can bear depends upon the quality of the soil it grows in and people are like fields the field has to lie fallow for sometimes for a season in order to bear better fruit mm. so that's the premise of this episode yeah. And it's something I'm trying to model in my own life, even though I feel conflicted. Like I'm taking yeah. this, you know, three straight weeks, more than that, about three and a half weeks with my family. It feels wrong. Yeah. I would and how, so how, like, how psycho are we as Christians? We're like, I can't take three and a half weeks with my family. That's evil. Like, but it's a very an American perspective because everyone in culture, your listening yeah. to this is Our like, culture. oh, we do yeah. that every year. Yeah, I've I've never taken more than a week off, um, and that's usually only once a year too. Uh, so yeah, uh, in yeah, well, a long time. I'm older than you, and yeah, I've never done that. Yeah. So yeah, so, so that's why we reported it, a so bunch of episodes. So let's all collectively hold yeah. AJ responsible <laughs> for taking a sabbatical at some point in the next year. So we just recorded a bunch of episodes because I have to work more and Scott has to work less. That's the reason <laughs> for a lot of episodes. <laughs> You know what? You didn't have that's not helping my psychosis about this. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I'll, I will make it through the month of June somehow, Scott, without you. Uh, You'll be more productive than you've been in your whole life. <laughs> I'll be like, you won't believe this. I got the book done. I had <laughs> the toolkits finished. There'll be all kinds of projects that are like just dangling near I the painted finish line. My house. <laughs> 
Oh man. All right. So, uh, we, okay. We just, we've got four points for you today. First one, um, first of all, just there's there, we have a biblical basis for rest. Um, yes. God, God, uh, we don't, I don't need to go, hey, God rested on the seventh day, but you know, rest is, I mean, you don't, you don't have to say it that way. <laughs> I mean, he did. <laughs> That's just so cliched. Uh, that, you know, even God rested. I, I think, actually, I think there's better biblical basis for rest than even God rested. Like, you know, I, I just think throughout really? scripture. Yeah, yeah, I do. I feel like we should, let's stop there for a minute and have this conversation. <laughs> no, I'm not Did saying God there's anything, and no, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with God modeling a period. Yeah, I mean, right, that's the whole point. He doesn't, he's not tired. That's right that that's the foundation of this. I'm just saying, I think throughout scripture, we can, we don't have to just go to that and say, that's my defense. I'm, oh, okay. you know, it's that's he, the foundation. Yeah, 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 okay. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It, right. I just, I'm saying it goes much deeper than that. It, and it's woven throughout scripture um, much more than that. Yeah. Okay. So we, you even have the idea of sabbatical in the Bible. For those of you who don't know, we're hoping that as much as we kind of joked on the front end, that if you're not a regular listener to this podcast and your pastor sent this to you, that this <laughs> might be helpful for you. Um, and Because a lot of you who are listening to this, your pastors, you're like, I, I know this, but maybe this would be a good resource for someone in your church who is like, what, what, what are these concepts? So the idea of a sabbatical is a Sabbath year. The, the, this is what was built in to the rhythms of, of Jewish cultures that it have a seven year cycle and the seventh year is a Sabbath year. So you have, you know, you have a, a week and the seventh day of the week is the Sabbath day. And then you'd have a year. And then the seventh year of a seven year cycle is, is sabbatical. It's a Sabbath year. And then you'd have seven cycles of that. And when you got to that 49th year, it's the year of Jubilee where everything resets. And so you have these cycles of seven. And when you get to the seventh thing, the seventh day, the seventh year, the seventh of seven years, uh, you have these cycles of rest. So it's built into the DNA of how God designed rhythms of life in order for you to have rest and rejuvenation. And if you've if you have any friends who are Jewish who or are Orthodox and they actually honor and follow the the feasts. It feels like they have one every five minutes, and when they're on these, <laughs> when they have these feasts, man, they're they're out. They're like they're like they're not working. They're off, and um, we go, oh my goodness, another another goodness, another feast, um, and and it's like yes, <laughs> the, the these feasts are for man to celebrate who God is, to find the rest that they need, and to be more fruitful. In the working season, and so um, when it's work time, it's it should be you should be all in on the work. But when it's rest, you should be all in on the rest, and that is what I'm just trying to start off here as a as a biblical principle. Yeah, like you read about Sabbath in in the Old Testament, and it's extreme. It's extreme non work, right? And and you're supposed to rest hard. And I don't think that we do that as Protestants in particular. We don't do that very well. Mm, yeah, we don't rest hard. Mm -hmm. We we work hard, and we burn out. <laughs> but we don't. But we don't yeah. have rhythms of work hard, rest hard. Yeah, it's true. I mean, we we crash at the end of the day. Sometimes we, you know, people work so hard. It's even rest is hard. Even sleep, daily rest, becomes hard because right. of you know how we live our lives, our daily our daily cycles. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I mean, it, it. How how different would like the whole human existence be if God built us to only need to sleep once a month, you know, or if we only ate once a month, you know? I mean, He could have made us any way He wanted to, and He made us like super dependent on rest. Like we only function well for one third of a day, and then we need a third of a day to stop. You know, I mean, for two thirds of a day and one third of a day to stop, we have to eat constantly. You know, yeah. I mean, we are so dependent on on things like that to our existence, uh, but we pre still pretend we're invincible. We, we've talked about this on the podcast, probably in some other time we chat about something adjacent to this. 
Do you know how much giraffes sleep? Wow, this is this? great trivia. No. We've talked about this on the podcast, so this is your <laughs> pop quiz for remembering podcast content from Lord knows how far back. Man, no, I don't I don't remember the giraffe talk. How much do, do giraffes rest? 30 minutes. Really? A night. Wow. And they never get anything done. <laughs> Standing around eating leaves. <laughs> <laughs> well, they have to eat constantly. Like they're they they have to eat constantly. Point is, God could have designed man to only need thirty minutes of sleep. Yeah, because he designed other creatures that way. Right. But he didn't. That's so. Yeah. There's your proof. You take the time to rest. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. He could have made us any way he wanted, but this this is what we're stuck with. Um, That's right. and we fight against it, right? I don't know. Is this now we're get, gonna get like super sp- spiritual on this? We battle against the 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 natural restraints that God puts on us as humans. Um, you know, I mean, can I skip a meal? Can I can I can I go two days without sleeping? You know, just to get this report ready, um, or you know, to to get one more thing knocked out for that customer. Um, so we fight against the natural to do what would be supernatural and it always catches up with us. Yeah. And, and I mean, there is people, biblical rationale for some of that. Some of the time that's what fasting is. Fasting is skipping meals, uh, but it's always dir- towards a direct purpose. Right. Yeah. For a reason yeah, to yeah, edify yeah. rather than to, you know, tear down. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay. So there we go. Um, so sabbatical so we've talked a little bit about rest so let's talk a little bit more about sabbatical then scott yeah i i don't need to add much here to what we've already said other than to say that i think we've gotten away from this there's all all these types of things are things that were normal in pre-american christianity this was not it was not hard, but the pace of life was different. In yeah. a non-instant society, it becomes more reasonable to say, I should take a break. Um, when you think about go, you know, go think about how long it would take you to get somewhere. So you just were building that in. Or before the invention of the electric light bulb. Like, I guess I'm done for work for today because yeah. the 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 sun is down, the moon is up. And it's hard to write and do work by candlelight. So, um, or or the size of our homes. If you're all living in one house and it's the kid's bedtime, guess what? Your day is done. You're not, you're not doing much. So all of the things, the way our society is built, our culture is built, the technology has built enables us to work in such a work against what God's, God's design for the universe. Um, And so sabbatical was natural and now it is unnatural. So when we see, when we feel that tension, you and I were just talking about this, even simple things like when you and I um, have to travel somewhere like to Europe for for a mission project, we might have a day of rest in transition because of the way the travel schedule built out. And we feel guilty about that. We're like, ah, I'm, I'm here on this layover in, you know, X city in Europe and I can, I can do a little bit of sightseeing and I can eat a croissant you know, and drink a cappuccino. And I feel like, oh, this is evil. It's not. This is is normal. And so there's so much really bad programming in our brains that we have to unwire that's not biblical. Yeah. It's just Western yeah. and American, and American in particular. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I don't know. What are some of the options? What are some of the options that um, elder teams may consider, or church leadership teams may consider then for uh, providing pastoral sabbaticals? Um, I guess most, most churches follow sort of the the Jewish tradition of like a seven year seven year seven year yeah. thing. Um, yeah. I've seen that as as low as maybe a few weeks off to a couple of months. Um, some, yeah. you know, now some, um, I think Aubrey, uh, our, our wonderful founder, um, he's going to be with the Lord now. Um, but back when he was teaching at the seminary, 
Um, their sabbaticals were were like even a, an entire school year long. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, it depends. It depends on the context, you know. In a, I think a sabbatical in a, in a uh, academic concept uh, context is usually like at least a semester, maybe even a whole school year, and it's usually you know they've got a something really specific they're working on. They're finishing a book or they're developing a new course or there's there's some sort of project that they are devoting different <laughs> time to. I've always thought that was a little bit conflicted, you know, like take this time to rest so that you can finish this major project that you need to do. So, yeah, but that's the difference. I mean, a sabbatical, a sabbatical in a, um, in a academic con context again is usually pretty directed. And we, we've applied that in some, some instances to a, in our, our pastor's context as well. So if they're taking two, maybe two months off or three months off, they're usually going to say, what's your sabbatical plan? What are you going to do? Yeah. And they want to see some proposal, like I'm going to develop X, Y, Z thing. I'm going to do such and such thing. And I would encourage churches, if they're going to go through something like that, that they, instead of saying, what's the work product, what's the deliverable, instead say, make a plan for structured rest. So maybe take some time for some extra coaching, maybe take some time to do some extra um, investment in your family, take some time to do... So that it's not work product deliverables that we're after, but instead that resting hard principle. How yeah. are you? How are you not just like, all right, but now I'm asleep until 10 and just going to watch television. How are you being intentional with the time that you're taking off? Yeah. So that it's fruitful. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Although being if, fully released from your daily duties, you know, and being able to put 10 hours a week into a book or something kind of project like that will probably see massive gains in that. And that's not going to be a burnout level of work. Um, and still a It'd lot of good, a lot sure. of rest. Yeah, built in. yeah. Potentially, but it isn't the, the goal of sabbatical is not to give you a different job for a little bit of time. It's yeah. to, it's to, it's to rest hard for a season, but that shouldn't necessarily mean it's totally unstructured. There, yeah. there might be specific goals you're trying to accomplish that are rest oriented um, rather than performance oriented. And yeah. and it's up to the church to decide, you know, summer, the reason why we, we called this episode summer break, um, because summer is often a good time to take this. You know, um, if you're going to do a sabbatical, take take June and July off. There's usually a less of an impact, felt impact within the church. Um, but maybe... Maybe it's good for the church to feel the pressure and, and 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 you're taking after Easter off or the beginning of the fall season off or something like that. It's yeah. up to you. There's no, and I, no and, yeah, and I think you know, I mean, one more note just on the practical it sh the person on sabbatical should be pretty well disconnected. Um, kind of an emergency only contact. Uh, they're not monitoring their emails. Um, you know, so like, Hey, sorry to bother you in your sabbatical. Just want to, you know, just this one thing, none of that. Mm -hmm. Um, it's like major catastrophe only. Um, I am not employed for a certain time. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The other thing I want to, uh, mention here, cause we've been talking about sabbatical and that's important, but also plan for regular weekly rest. That's equally important. So you shouldn't have to go, you know, God didn't design the, the work rest rhythm to be um, work seven days a week for seven years. And then you, and then you get a sabbatical year. No, it's work six days and take a seventh day and um, you know, be sure you're taking a true sabbatical day. Are we, be, you know, most churches pastors will take maybe Monday off uh, in addition to Saturday off. But things tend to creep into Saturday and things can kind of creep into the, your day off. You, you've got to have one day that you truly protect. And if and if for some reason life has to creep into that day, then for that week, switch to a different day. Yeah, You genuinely need a day off. I, I'm th I would actually say this is a negative consequence, uh, not just in church, um, but the always on culture always accessible via email, at least if you are in a corporate setting, you can write to your HR and say, you employ me to work Monday through Friday. 
And there's, there's not a reasonable expectation that you would get a response from me on Saturday or Sunday. When you're a pastor, you don't get to say, mm, HR, <laughs> like, there's no, like, here's the, there's none of that conversation. And so it's up to you to create those boundaries and say, at least this one day a week, I'm not going to reply to an email. Uh, maybe that's Saturday, maybe that's Friday, maybe that whatever that it's not going to be Sunday because Sunday's a work day for you. So pick a day and it's up to you. Like people will respect those boundaries to the degree that you enforce them. So if people see that you respond on Friday, they'll keep emailing you on Friday. If yeah. they see that you don't reply on Friday, they'll stop emailing you on Friday. Yeah. 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 I think that's a good, that's a good point. Um, so yeah, you know, there, there may be some pushback on this, um, at ver from various, various people. I think it's important, uh, to get at, you know, if we're talking pastors or pat or pastor level roles in the church, I think we need, uh, elders fully on board with this council, whatever your senior leaders are, um, and, uh, to help, um, you know, help run defense, uh, on that as well and project a unified, um, you know, agreement to the body that, uh, this is important. We're all behind this. And, uh, yeah, of course you also need a plan, uh, for, for while you're away. Other, other people will, will pick up, pick up those tasks and it's doesn't leave a tremendous hole. Yeah. The last thing I want to say on this and we'll wrap up the episode and, and you, you can go to the, um, episodes article at malforsgroup.com forward slash 246. Um, to get even more detail and kind of a maybe more structured, like here's what we should do, bing, bang, boom, um, is consider that you are modeling, well, I guess two things. One, your folks need to understand that being a pastor is different than any other kind of job. When you're a pastor, every interaction you have with the public is is an interaction with a person who maybe goes to your church, used to go to your church, or might someday go to your church. And so there's never a moment when you're in ministry where you feel like you can be truly off when you're when you're in your hometown. I, that's just, I'm just telling you, I, I'm if you're listening to this and you're a pastor, you're saying amen. And if you're not a pastor or you've not been on staff in a church, you just have to believe me when I tell you that. Um, you never, consciously or unconsciously, you always feel like you're on. And so you need that regular rhythm of rest to be able to disconnect from it and not identify your whole self with that ministry position. But the other thing I want to say is you need to be, you need to take these rest moments to model the importance of rest to everyone in your church. If you never take a break and you're a workaholic, that communicates to everyone in your church that the only way to be spiritually mature is to be a workaholic. And there may be seasons in life where as a volunteer, even you need to roll off because your your kid's about to graduate from high school and you need to spend more time with them before they go. Or there might be some other reason that a volunteer needs to roll off and to to model rhythms where you can don't where it's not all in or all out, but taking rest, regular rest when needed in a season is a good way to model for your church what it looks like to have a sustainable ministry over the long term yeah yeah that's good stuff that is good stuff i'll have to listen to this episode one day and uh see if and I can... live it out yeah that's right everybody's responsibility in this episode is to hold aj accountable to taking more time off uh work i'm calling him on uh, on the on the mat here you don't have to go anywhere fancy you can just be off you can yeah. close we, especially you and i both work from home so yeah in one sense you're like i'm never not at work, but yeah. you've got an office door, man. It yeah. shuts. So I lock myself out of my own office. Lock yourself out. <laughs> <laughs> right. Give, give the keys, give the keys to your wife. Yeah. And she can unlock it for you. That's what I'll do. Yeah. That's what I'll do. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll go sit in the living room with my phone. Like eh, if Scott, Scott needs me, I'll be able to answer <laughs> that message from in here. You can always decline. Decline. You don't need me. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, there you go. Um, a little episode on uh, on a sabbatical and some rest time. So, yeah, I do hope um, 
that you'll take that to heart uh, because we we talk with you guys. I mean, you call us and we we hear your your tiredness. You sometimes you tell us that explicitly, uh, and sometimes we can just pick up on it because we we know you uh, and we care about you. And uh, yeah, I will I will I will consider this, Scott. I will take this into consideration. I, I know you, yeah. and I care about you, which is why <laughs> I am as this episode is airing modeling for you what it looks like (laughs) to to take some my wife would completely agree it but believe me she was in full agreement she was like you should be more like scott you should you should not work for a few weeks uh and maybe that'll happen someday in the meantime uh it's up to you (laughs) (laughs) this has been episode 246 of the church revitalization podcast uh so go to malfordsgroup.com slash 246 and uh, yeah, you can maybe, so maybe this is something helpful. You could send off uh, to your, to a, a staff team, an elder team, and uh, maybe get a little support behind getting some rest for you and others in your ministry. Thanks for being with us. See you next week.